Hello, you. You've got the room video pinned to full screen if you want to pin it. Thanks uh, for taking the time for attending this session. My name is uh, Santa Patnaik and I am from ARM. Uh, we are working on uh, developing a firmware and a firmware You were the first designer. It is considering the feature set of the newest platform. It supports uh, CXL 2.0. And, uh, and in kernel, we already have a notable presence of uh, CXL framework. Uh, thanks to the community. And, uh, but, but the kernel expects uh, certain configurations and uh, topology detail. I don't know, we lost him entirely. Testing, testing. The, the sound from remote, I guess, went off. We're working on it. Okay. So just let you know, the signs of the, the sound went out on our end. We can't we can't hear you. I don't know if you can hear us. Okay, so we are connected. The primary thing, uh, what the objective is to have a memory expansion device, um, and that when we have a memory expansion device, the kernel would expect a uh, memory only human one, which would be described in the system locality, resource affinity, hardware capability. And uh, that, that's where this is like uh, a space structure comes in picture, and uh, that's what we prepared for cellular kernel. And in addition, if there is any heterogeneous uh, uh, properties, um, like uh, latencies and bandwidth attributes to be shared uh, for the kernel, that's, uh, that's where the HPAT table is being prepared and shared in the kernel. Uh, that's from the uh, part of view of the memory node. And uh, from the point of view of the CXL root device, uh, so CXL 11 kernel expects uh, the root device uh, to be present in the ACPA next space and uh, for kicking off the integration of uh, downstream CXL devices and uh, also understanding the properties of interleaving across host bridges. So uh, that's, that's where this uh, ACPA object uh, within the HID of uh, ACPA 117. In the form where it is needed, and uh, uh, which would uh, indicate the kernel that there is a present of presence of a CXL root device, it would kick off the pro uh, proteins, and uh, it uh, and and uh, subsequently the enumeration process, and discovering other devices uh, downstream topology, and uh, it would also indicate the presence of uh, CDT tables, even though it is not completely dependent on it. And, uh, and and for each host bridge present in the system, there should be an unique uh, uh, ACPI object uh, of uh, HID ACPI 0016. So that's what also being prepared. It would have a lot of methods associated with it. And uh, some of the methods for discovering and uh, uh, configuring the devices are same to uh, the PCI host bridges. And uh, some method like CBR, which can point to the uh, root complex block for configuring the HDM um, decoders are needed. But uh, in current situation, only the host bridges which are present at boot time is considered. So these methods are not implemented. Yeah. And and uh, the CXL already discovery tables which would um, give information for, and and share with kernel where the kernel would 
have the pointers uh, for configuring the host bridges uh, for HDM decoders or, or also the type of like memory windows which can be shared with this uh, through these structures. So the CDT, uh, CHB structure uh, would share the pointer where the uh, host bridge registers uh, can be configured for any sort of HDM decoders um, uh, configuration required based on the topology. Yeah. And uh, and 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 it, they, there should be unique uh, ACPI objects. Uh, I mean, uh, for each host bridge, there should be an associated CSBS. And uh, the UID object under the AC, uh, host bridge object should uh, match with the UID of the CSBS structure. So that 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 that's how they form the relation, and uh, it, it picks up in the topology, and. Uh, the fixed memory window structure, and that would that would define a memory ranges available in the host system, which can be mapped for accessing the device uh, remote device memory ranges. And uh, if if there is uh, multiple targets for a host uh, for a memory range, which can be also described in this structure, and uh, and whatever the interleaving ways being configured, so all those properties and details can be. Uh, mentioned in the structure where kernel can pick up the details and uh, do necessary configurations. So these are the uh, tables, uh, what's being prepared in the uh, firmware in the ETK2 and uh, shared with the kernel uh, for the kernel CXL framework to consume and um, prepare the right topologies and do the right configuration. Into the uh, harder platform, so the uh, the fixed virtual platform is uh, the test platform for this work, and uh, it, it's the a little background about this FVP. Uh, it's a complete uh, simulation of an ARM system. Uh, it, it, it includes processor, interconnects, and uh, memory, and some of the peripherals also. And it gives a lot of flexibility in customizing the design, uh, uh, model. Uh, so you know, for uh, current work. Uh, uh, the RD uh, Neovis N2 uh, FVP model is chosen, and uh, and and the CXL support is being added into this. So, which is uh, not yet complete, it is evolving um, actually. So, uh, some of the features which have been added are like uh, DVSEC registers, mailbox, CDAT DOE capabilities, and HDM interleaving uh, logic is not fully yet completed. So, but uh, it's ongoing task. So, so in a sense, uh, this FVP model gives a lot of flexibility in uh, designing and customizing according to the uh, need. And uh, why FVP is like uh, in the absence of the real hardware, uh, it allows uh, the software uh, community and the developers to prepare the framework where it can, where they can uh, verify uh, the functionality. It, for functional verification, it's a well-suited model. It is fast. Yes, uh, in case if there is a need of uh, you know, where, where there is a time accuracy or the performance tuning kind of requirement, uh, then this platform is not suitable. But uh, but but for our CXL uh, framework uh, former development, uh, it's well suited. So and and we can keep adding the features of the CXL as well and uh, keep uh, evolving both in the AVP as well as in the framework in the software side. So and then it it also allows the user to debug. It it comes along with a lot of libraries and tools. So there can be a lot of way to debug also what kind of uh, data transactions are being happening and uh, yeah things like that. Uh, this is a very high level uh, presentations of this uh, into uh, SOC. What exactly are there? Uh, just to give what kind of uh, hardware we are using and how how exactly is the communication is is being happening and um, so so uh, it tends into we have the SCP block uh, which is the system control processor. It has a M7 core in it and it would control the whole system's uh, power reset uh, clock uh, domains and. Uh, so in a sense, it's kind of a master, and uh, there is this uh, application processor block, uh, which would uh, be having uh, ARM v9 node based cores, 
and uh, TMN 700 is the uh, main interconnect uh, in the stock, uh, which will be having different nodes in it uh, for um, connecting all the blocks around. And uh, and and uh, IO virtualization block, which has a multiple lanes uh, under it, and uh, there can be multiple uh, root ports being can be connected. Um, uh, root devices can be connected um, in the downstream port of this IO virtualization block and that that's what um, being utilized and uh, in 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 this uh, development work uh, there is a CXL capable root uh, device has been plugged in here under one of these IO virtualization block and uh, there is one uh, CXL uh, type 3 device uh, capable of uh, certain properties uh, which are highlighted here so that's been uh, placed under this uh, root device and uh, and then that's how this uh, CXL IO communication happens through this block and for for the remote memory range. Uh, so uh, the portion of uh, system memory has been chosen and uh, it's considered as a remote memory and that range uh, is being uh, configured in the CCG port. So the CCG port is the CMN 700 port for doing uh the cxl meme transactions uh so it it, it is uh, cxl 2.0 compatible and, and that's what is being configured uh for the for accessing uh, performing any kind of cxl meme transactions and this this so hdm memory what's highlighted here it would be a remote memory and considered as a cxl mem and uh, the dram uh, is the local memory so that so that that's how uh, we are trying to uh uh, demonstrate uh, a memory expansion capability using the CXL framework. And and uh, so one one thing to mention here is the FVP allows uh, just by modifying some script logic uh, to have multiple CXL devices under this root port, and that that sort of uh, topology can be uh, uh, just on the fly can be done. Yeah. Coming to the former work, uh, so we start with the system control processor where the actual boot process starts. And uh, first thing uh, for this work is being done is the interconnect configuration uh, so that uh, uh, PCI uh, uh, enumeration can happen and uh, CXL a device uh, with the extended capability of the CXL and um, DOE capability is being is found. If found, then uh, the it's uh, CDAT tables are read out and uh, what all properties and basically it just tries to find out uh, the device, the kind of memory ranges it supports. So once that memory range uh, is uh, found, so it needs to configure uh, once the memory range is being found, it needs to configure the interconnect uh, for uh, doing this uh, any sort of uh, meme configuration. So that, that's the sole purpose and uh, it's being done uh, before uh, AP boot. So that's why uh, this uh, enumeration and uh, doing DOE operations and uh, understanding the kind of uh, range it supports and uh, and then configure the interconnect accordingly. So that's what being done in the uh, former in the system control processor and uh, in the in the, in the subsequently when the boot phase comes into EDK2 uh, and uh, in the EDK2's PCI enumeration phase uh, it has already. So when it kicks in uh, it will also um, uh, during the enumeration process it will also invoke the CXL uh, uh, Dixie which is uh, newly introduced uh, so so it will uh, invoke CXL Dixie uh, routines um, to also find out a PCI device with extended capability of the CXL and DOE and uh, and if again in there also if it is found so then the CDAT uh, like DS mass and uh, DSE MTS uh, Tables should be fetched out to understand the kind of memory ranges and what kind of memory and uh, what kind of EFI memory types it uh, supports. And uh, so those details uh, would be uh, captured and kept in a local uh, data structure for later platform driver to use. And uh, when the execution uh, reaches uh, platform Dixie, uh, so and then when it tries to prepare these uh, SRAT, HMAT tables, um, SPA tables. 
So it would fetch, it would uh, invoke those um, CXL Dixie protocol routine interfaces and fetch those details and uh, prepare necessary uh, all the all the SCPI structures and uh, and th that's how all the SCPI structures should be prepared and uh, and also the structures uh, for the CDTs and CXL root device uh, would be uh, prepared and uh, shared with kernel um, uh, during the boot process in the next phase of the boot when the kernel comes it would pick up uh, all those SCPI tables and in kernel already uh, there is a framework to uh, understand those SCPI tables and uh, pick up the details and do the configurations and uh, uh, prepare the topology uh, right topology so in kernel uh, for now we are just utilizing which is well covered CXL framework and uh, and then seeing that uh, validating the formula is uh, rightly uh, done or not, whether it's preparing the tables properly or not. So uh, the formula is not only uh, here helped us in validating this formal work. Uh, the kernel not only validated helped us in validating this formal work. It also helped us uh, like in understanding uh, how exactly uh, it should be done in the formula and uh, what kind of uh, data should be populated in the ACPI tables and what's the right topology to keep there. So that that way it was a, a good for us to understand the framework and utilize it. And for uh, memory nodes, it just uses the NUMA framework. So the educative work uh, has been published uh, recently uh, for uh, RFC and the links are shared here. Uh, please uh, have a look uh, if when you get time and uh, share your uh, feedback uh, we would be happy to uh, address that and rework accordingly yeah and uh, this is just a presentation of uh, like what's the kind of um, uh, topology is currently done and uh, what's uh, so 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 we have a single endpoint um, yeah, they, there are multiple endpoints, but uh, for CXL, uh, there is a CX, CXL uh, capable single endpoint, single root port, single host bridge. Uh, so uh, just uh, utilizing the uh, software framework and uh, uh, in, uh, model the FVP model, what we are using right now, don't have the interleaving logic uh, completely. So we're just uh, using it in the framework um, to populate the data structures properly. And so it's it, uh, when we publish these uh, memory window structures, it is just one way, one decoder configurations, and uh, it's a one way or almost non, non one way or non interleaving configurations. Uh, but uh, but uh, the FVP allow has the flexibility to add uh, endpoint another endpoint in this topology just by modifying the script at runtime. So. Uh, so it, it can be done and uh, uh, tables can be modified. Uh, table configurations can be modified accordingly just uh, to your uh, trying to make uh, the interleaving logic work here so that um, it, it gives um, uh, more value addition in this all solution yeah on the, the status and uh, current completed and what's the next task we are aiming for uh, so uh, currently we have um, the CXL device enumerations and all the ACPA table preparations. Um, uh, uh, though, and those things are done at 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 um, at the current stage. What the kind of uh, FVP supports at that extent? Uh, but uh, definitely it would be evolving, uh, and there will be more uh, contents would be added and more um, intricacies will be added in these uh, tables and the data configurations. And uh, on the future side, um, next thing, one thing we first thing we would like to have is like the complete interleaving capability in the FVP and uh, software also would be enhanced to uh, demonstrate that complete uh, capability. And uh, and yeah, of course, would be uh, will continue engagement with the developer community and. Um, contribute to whatever possible way in the firmware and the kernel. And uh, so uh, from the architectural point of view, 
memory pooling is uh, one of the topic uh, which is uh, the next um, uh, next topic uh, next in the next architecture which is being investigated so um, we'll we'll work on it and come to it uh, when there is uh, more things more substantial things uh, in picture yeah. and uh, and then and another thing we definitely want to uh, cover is like uh, this SBBR, which is server based uh, boot requirements. So uh, many of the uh, points uh, in the SBBR are covered with this uh, development, um, like preparing uh, SCPA tables and uh, considering uh, the memory types and attributes. Uh, so many things are covered considering this memory expansion use case. Uh, but uh, there are many. Um, as we add more features and there will be more points to cover. So we definitely would like to have that coverage uh, as much as we can uh, to make the solution more standard uh, and acceptable in community as well. And uh, yeah, uh, from kernel point of view, we'll continue using the latest kernel and also validating the firmware. And also, in a sense, if there is any contribution uh, from our side, we'll try to do that. And on the reference side, um, these are the couple of references we are sharing. Uh, so the first is um, the link for where the uh, the newest uh, reference solution is being published. Uh, so it would give a sense of like uh, what kind of uh, support is there and uh, some details. Uh, so it may help uh, for the uh, developers and. Uh, and uh, for the FVP uh, download link, that FVP is uh, downloadable for everyone. Uh, so anyone can download and try any try try any kind of experiments they want to do. So yeah, uh, that would be all from my side for now. Yeah, thanks thanks for attending. If uh, there is any question, question, we can yeah. Uh, one question, and uh, you have mentioned that. Uh, uh, the memory, uh, the six-year memory, is treated uh, as a uh, NUMA, NUMA node, and I see that in the uh, previous slides. Yeah, and the uh, and the next you have seen in the future work, you will deal with the memory pooling. So how we deal with the six-year memory? I mean, um, because uh, it, it, I don't think it's belong to the NUMA. Uh, uh, right, right. To, I. I get your point. Um, yeah, so that's uh, kind of a topic uh, which is still under a bit of debate, and um, uh, the, I don't think there is a very conclusive answer uh, to that yet. So um, that's why it's still under investigation. Yes, uh, of course, uh, the NUMA um, it can't be. Uh, that's not so efficient. Uh, the that protocol and um, considering pool memory, and uh, that may not be the right uh, way to use it. So how that uh, far memory or the near memory would be managed uh, still it's being um, uh, discussed and uh, yeah so I, I don't have clear answer uh, to that yet you know, maybe uh, uh, in the future would be in a yeah. better position to answer that yeah um, uh, so now uh, so now for example uh, in our system we have the a high bandwidth memory it's very fast to DRAM and uh, and we have a six year memory and uh, and we put them in the same uh, memory address range range and uh, it doesn't mean some address range would be slower than others uh, right. is there any proposal or or patch uh, related to this work uh, because when we uh, introduce the six year memory into the this kernel, we, we must deal with it. It, it looks like a catch hierarchy, but it's not a catch hierarchy. Guys, uh, guys, can I just ask you to stop a minute? We need to switch the on site room to, uh, to microphone mode so they can talk to you as well. Okay. Sorry, sorry. Can can you repeat the last part of your question? Uh, um, uh, my uh, uh, my last question is 
uh, my last question is how we uh, uh, when we introduce the six six year memory into the list, list kernel, we will meet a, a, a different uh, 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 range of uh, uh, di different speed of the memory. Some address range behave uh, faster, such as the uh, high bandwidth memory, uh, and the sound would be uh, belong to the six L memory, and uh, and uh, and uh, it looks like a catch hierarchy. I mean, different uh, uh, speed, but they are a memory. Uh, they they are the memory range of that. Yes. Um... Yes, uh, that that's true. Now, when you have a CXL memory, that share uh, different properties, and that may have different properties and attributes, and that may share different um, bandwidth attributes. That's where uh, it's being tried to be captured in some of the um, ACPI uh, in the HMAT and all those nodes, but uh, that's that's not enough. Um, there are uh, certain um, uh, algorithms or things need to be uh, there for. Uh, for like uh, for uh, efficiently managing this uh, and then distinguishing this uh, uh, remote memory and the local memory uh, but uh, yeah th that's a bit of um, out of scope from our work right now and uh, uh, so uh, maybe yeah so uh, maybe in near future when we go in further testings and uh, Things like that. Uh, so maybe we'll be in a. Uh, we'll have more uh, clear that's, answer that's to that. Yeah. For the next speaker too. So so and I don't I don't know. Uh, maybe uh, later. Uh, I, I think maybe Dan want to jump in on this. Uh, I don't know if you quickly want to say something, Dan. Oh no, I was, was going to ask uh, a naive question about like is is this code going into the EDK2 stream and can QEMU take advantage of it? But yeah, we we, we can take that uh, offline. But yeah, yeah, but I think we're, we're, we're going to talk later about memory pooling and things, right? So I think we'll we'll, we'll circle go back to this, some of these questions in other in later sessions. All right, let's uh, thank the speaker and yeah, thank thank you, thanks everyone.